afternoon and welcome to C.C. Gurukul lecture. In continuation with the series on Indian sociological tradition, in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the contribution of an Indian sociologist Andhra Bethe. In the first half of the lecture we have discussed about the approach and the way in which he tra Andhra Bethe tried to build a new discipline of sociology in India. In this lecture we will try to understand his contribution to understanding social system inequality and stratification. So, when we look into his understanding of social system, we see that there are two types of social system. One is harmonic. Now, harmonic is a system in which we know that the society is graded into different strata. They are hierarchically arranged and the ordering is considered as appropriate. So, for a very long time the discourse on caste system would consist of Indian system as harmonic because the caste system was arranged in a hierarchy and a functional perspective explained the reciprocal and interdependent relation between the two. So, there was a relation between uh, the normative pattern and the actual way in which it was functioning. So, it was considered as harmonious. The second type of system is disharmonic. Uh, it is a system in which there is no consistency between the order in which groups are arranged. So, it will be a, a haphazard arrangement of group. Now, how will this arrangement will be done? It will depend on the individual access to resources. So, some individuals have more money, they can buy more land resource, they can have more political power. So, it will be kind of a discrepancy between the existential and normative. So, here when we trying to look into what Srinivas, uh, M. N. Srinivas gives us in terms of the emergence of a secular hierarchy where some of the members of lower caste because of their position, their dominance and their numerical strength are able to improve their position in the caste hierarchy. So, the disharmonic system is a maladaptive social condition in which the normative system is in disharmony with the existential system. So, when we look into the disharmonic system, it is also kind of talking about the idea that th it is kind of egalitarian at ideological level, but at the experiential level it becomes a practice of inequality. So, when we look into the contribution, the first thing that we need to understand before we understand uh, Andhra Bethe's understanding. Uh, contribution is to understand the difference between the two terms difference and inequality. Because difference says the two groups are different from one another. Inequality becomes that because of your dis, uh, difference you are assigned a subordinate status. Now, once the status becomes subordinate your access to resources gets denied. Therefore, it is kind of a uh, Inequality is inbuilt into the different system. According to Andhra Bethe, individual in society often encounter natural inequality. So, in terms of say to uh, people belonging from to gender to ethnic background. So, there is a kind of a natural difference between the two. And because of certain natural differences, there could be difference in the capacity, potential and ability bestowed an individual. But then these natural uh, kind of uh, capacity, difference in capacity when legitimized by the society for unequal endowment of opportunity, it becomes inequality. Differences become inequalities only with the application of scales. Now, these scales are not given to us by nature but are constructed, they are culturally constructed in the society by particular human beings under particular historical condition. So, if you look into the caste system, there was a system which was kind of religiously legitimized that there is a scale on which the Brahmins and the Shudras are placed and because of the positioning in the scale, the entitlements were differed. So, difference is natural inequality becomes social and cultural. So, when we look into inequality, we have to first understand equality. So, it, 
every society it is kind of a competitive society and with modernization with more and more of secular uh, uh, kind of uh, society with market based society competition has increased so bethe says that inequality can last only till the end of the competition after the competition it will kind of lead to difference of opportunity and therefore it is important to kind of understand both equality and inequality so after the competition we need know that the, it leads to inequality of reward and the reproduction of inequality another another form so once a competition end one gets a reward that reward becomes the base for mobility and the other who kind of is out of the system would then kind of be able ne to never be able to come at the same egalitarian plane as the other if we read out a quotation from his work published in 1977 we will understand what vethe want to tell us about equality and inequality he writes the great paradox of the modern world is that everywhere men attach them to the principle of equality and everywhere in their own life as well as in the life of other they encounter the presence of inequality the more strongly they attach themselves to the principle or the ideology of equality the more oppressive the reality becomes so that is what is important that they are kind of uh, two sides of the same coin and it kind of important to understand both in order to understand the social structure according to bethe it is important to understand that no society is free from inequalities of power all kinds of societies simple complex uh, agrarian urban some amount of inequality is persistent he mentions two aspect of social inequality the first is distributive aspect which refers to the different factors that is income wealth occupation education power and skill these are the resources that are distributed in a society now because of scarcity of resources these will be distributed unequally now it provides the basis of interpersonal interaction in society so it's more at the level of individual whereas when we understand caste inequality it is more at the level of community or collective inequality the second type of inequality that andre bethe is referring to is relational relational aspect refers to the ways in which the individual differentiated by different factors relate to each other within a system or group so in relational aspect the thrust is on interaction of people belonging to one group or category now here when we look into the relational aspect we see some level of biasness or some level of inappropriate distribution of resources because of the relational dimension so a member of a brahmin community would prefer to kind of give resource to a brahmin rather than the other and that itself would lead to inequality bethe explains that the major form of social inequality that have been studied by sociologists intensively are those that arise out of disparities of wealth and income so he is kind of bringing in the idea that the market plays a very important role in terms of access to resources and structuring the level of inequality in society types of inequality he level mentions three types of inequality first especially with reference to the rural agrarian structure inequality between the landlord and the landless so you need to understand the access to land as an economic factor which leads to the inequality now a number of sociologists has referred to the fact that there is a kind of a caste class nexus in this majority of the land owners are from upper caste and therefore and the majority of those who are the tillers or are landless are from the say the subordinate caste the second type of inequality 
is inequality found between the owners of land and the workers. And third is inequality found between large, medium and small owners. Of all these inequality, the inequality found in the first two classes that is the inequality between landlord and landless are clearly based on contradictory division although in the third class only class differences are found. So, there is a kind of uh, way in which we understand uh, the uh, inequality not only by referring to the caste as ascribed uh, inequality, but also in terms of certain inequality which kind of affects in the life course of individual. Now, we have looked into the types of inequality, Weber wants to understand what is the source of this inequality. All societies are unequal, so from where is inequality emerging? He identifies two sources, one is evaluation and second organization. Now, both evaluation and organizations are present in all society. So, evaluation is an inherent part of culture. Any action taken will be evaluated by the members and organization is in terms of required for the distribution of force, power and dominance. So, the interplay between evaluation and organization is important for Bethe. To recognize evaluation as a source of inequality, he explains the term intelligence. Evaluation becomes important at two levels. The social process by which intelligence or any other attribute in a society has been awarded supremacy over other attributes. So, the capacity to be kind of doing certain kind of work is considered as more important. So, if you are kind of say we look a very commonsensical ex example in good in science and maths then you are kind of considered as a bright student compared to the other. So, your intelligence uh, the evaluation is in terms of your capacity to do certain tasks compared to the other. The second level at which evaluation becomes important is the process by which we give value to difference of intelligence level in comparison to difference in beauty, health, etc. in the same sense. So, we would kind of give more value to certain qualities compared to the others. Now, when we kind of differentiate between the capacity and certain values over the other, difference becomes inequality through evaluation. So, the source of inequality is how the system is evaluated and how the organization kind of credits the evaluation done. The most important contribution of Andhra Bethe was his approach to understand stratification through multiple hierarchies. He says that in the villages or in the rural structure, not only caste functions as hierarchical, but they are others and they are kind of overlap one another and more often they cut across each hierarchy. So, the three dimension which is caste, class and power is referring to the multiple hierarchies working at the level of village. Caste was looked as having immense influence upon the class position, power structure by most of the thinker. Andhra Bethe brings out a highly different and analytical framework involving a number of new forces which act to produce enormous change in village structure. So, it is not just the interplay between caste and class. So, they are not interacting in a, in a kind of any kind of a vacuum. The economic structure, the market, the political changes that are taking place, especially education, democracy, uh, secularization, all of this are going in a kind of a systematic manner to bring about a change in the hierarchy and stratification. Let us now discuss his work caste, class and power. The caste, class and power was based on the study of village Sripuram in Tamil Nadu and is based on the assumption of a rational distinction between caste, class and power as three dimension of social stratification. 
Berthe was interested in looking at the changing relation of stratification in Tanzor and he brought to light the traditional caste structure as well as the forces of changes that are making way into it. According to Bethe, Sripuram village is an agrarian village. The whole village is dominated by the king of the Brahmin to look after the temple and other buildings of the village. So, we will see there is a kind of a ritual hierarchy where the dominance is being given to the Brahmins who are also kind of custodians of the state. He kind of develops a caste model where he identifies certain features of caste system and he's kind of considered this model as useful in understanding the nature of stratification in India. The first is that is based on the idea and not on the actual behavior of the people. So, when we were looking into the features of caste system say pollution and purity and even in terms of the caste ranking commensality, these were certain ideas and in actual practice it was difficult to find these features. These ideas are only referred into the classical text. So, they were based on the book view of caste system and not relevant in terms of understanding the empirical reality. The system is based on the rules of the game and fourth different caste fulfill com complementary functions and the mutual relations are non antagonistic. So, basically the caste model which was coming in the understanding of Indian society was critically examined by Andre Bethe and he rejected this caste model as relevant for understanding the specific uh, particular nature of economic and political life. According to Bethe, the caste model could only apply to any system of religious belief as it reflects ritual which divide the people of Sripuram. And he would say that within the upper caste or the Brahmin, there were further segmentation and there was lot of difference in terms of the religious belief system, the rituals and everyday practices. So, the model is not functioning at the empirical reality. For Ka, uh, Bethe, caste was not timeless static phenomena of all Hindu unequivocally. So, when we look into how the caste actually functioned in the Tanjore, we need to understand his case study. The settlement pattern of the village continues to reflect the basic division of the traditional caste structure. The study found that in Tanjore, the ownership of land is not only a source of wealth, it is also a source of prestige and power. So, the triology between class, status and party or, or power is evident in the case of Tanjore. So, it is the upper uh, caste who would have more access to land and because they have access to land and they are higher in the caste uh, hierarchy the status increases and the power kind of comes in from the first two. The class system in the uh, Tanzor village structure according to Andhra Bethe consists of three. The first class is Brahmin that is the landowner. The second is non-Brahmin that is tenant of, of the Brahmin and the third category is Adi Dravidyas, original Dravidyas and these are the subtenant or agriculturals or the labor and there is a kind of a mutual relation between the three. Now, within each of these three larger class category, they would be for the subdivision. So, in the social stratification system, the Brahmins were at the top, then came the non-Brahmin and the lowest was the Adi Dravidian. He is also referring to the residential pattern which was kind of structured in a manner to show the distance between the caste. So, the caste, class and power relates to the different phenomena of social stratification. In Tanzor, Bethe finds caste system to be more rigid and complex. The caste system apart from dividing the unequal ritual status of villager 
also dominate their political and economic life. So, it is not only restricted to the ritual status, it indirectly impacts the economic and political position of the people in the caste hierarchy. When we look into the second dimension of stratification that is class, according to Bethe, class is also hierarchical just like caste. And wha what is the hierarchy, hierarchy functioning according to it? It is functioning according to the forms of owners, landowner tenants and agricultural label. So, your uh, position in the class hierarchy was directly related to the ownership of land. So, in the peasant hierarchical system, a clear distinction was made between the topmost and the lowest descendant. Many clear differences can be seen in the way of the living of big landlords and the landless. So, everyday reality, the differences could be uh, observed. Firstly, they differ only in terms of their functions. Landlords are not engaged in any kind of physical labor. So, you will see all the physical labor being done by the agricultural labor. So, the, uh, when we look into the relation between caste and peasant class uh, structure, Andre Bethe says that there are two types of relationship. One is the surface relationship. Surface relationship means what is kind of uh, evident. So, the belief that the landlords are the owners, they are the upper caste and the landless are generally the lower up. So, this is kind of legitimacy of the hierarchy system. And the second uh, way of understanding the caste caste relation is to look into the deeper relationship. Now, the deeper relationship would be the value attached to caste and land caste. That is that it is not just kind of at the surface, it is also impacting the way in which resources are distribution and exploitation takes place. So, the unequal relation between the tenant and the agricultural labors are visible and recognized. Now, the third dimension is power and power structure in Tanzor. So, the main base of power structure in Indian villages comes in from ruling class based on dynasty or later on Jamindar or Talukdari. So, if you are from the ruling class, you will have access to power. The higher caste on the basis of rights in the caste hierarchy in which the status was obtained on the basis of birth and third, the post in the kind of Jati Panchayat was also hereditary. So, there was a kind of a practice that it, the Panchayat head or would which was also a source of political power would kind of automatically be going into the members of the upper caste. So, the fourth in the village Panchayat too, the head was usually on the hereditary basis. So, power structure manifests the form of a closed system. So, it is not possible to kind of move from one order to another in the power hierarchy. Apart from this, the status of status summation is also visible. That is, the upper caste is the upper class and they also hold the highest position of power. So, there is a kind of a very cl uh, close nexus between caste, class and power. The locus of power has shifted. Now, he is talking about the change taking place in the agrarian structure and the locus of power is no longer in the kind of caste ritual hierarchy. He, it is shifting to the dominant caste which is uh, uh, also a secular hierarchy. With land coming into the market, the distribution of property was disassociated from caste. So, he is basically saying that with the kind of large uh, amount of changes taking place in the society like secularization, uh, uh, education, uh, uh, growth of democracy, Panchayati Raj system, there is a kind of a shift taking place from uh, the uh, focus of power from caste to class and then to, pow uh, to power. And we then we look also look into the third component of Andre Bethe's contribution which is looking into the backward class in contemporary India. This was one of his later books published in 1992. This is a set of essays on the backward class in contemporary India. 
This essay deals primarily with the issue of public policy and the problem of reservation in contemporary India. Now, it is important to kind of look into the debates on reservation as articulated by Bethe because of the idea that there was a lot of debate in terms of understanding the importance of caste system in India. And in his book, The uh, Caste Old and New, he is focusing on how there is a change in the way in which caste is becoming more secular in terms of its rising significance in politics and vote bank. He also looks into the way in which people are now not so much concerned about the notions of pollution and purity, but it is more in terms of access to the uh, say public uh, jobs and educational facility and therefore the shift is seen in terms of a shift from a ritual hierarchy to a secular based hierarchy. Coming back to the backward class in contemporary India, Andhra Bete begins with the critique of equality provision in the constitution of India. He kind of uh, critically examines the meaning of equality because he is of the opinion that equality is basically a kind of abstract. It's not does not exist in, in a reality. It's only at the level of ideology. He argues that the problem is not simply that of contradiction between the principle of equality and the practice of inequality but also of the tension between divergent concept of equality. So, you cannot have a singular understanding of equality and then implement it in terms of public policy. So, he was supported the reservation of schedule caste and schedule type, but he was against the reservation for OBC, which he considered as a residual and ambiguous category. Backwardness of SC and ST, according to Bethe, was coming in merely from poverty. So, the schedule caste were kind of coming in from a back, uh, poor background. So, in his work on poverty and inequality, he is looking into the idea that it is a cultural poverty. And these STs were because they were secluded out of the uh, larger society. But then you, when we look into the OBC, which is a, a, a kind of a heterogeneous and homogeneous, he is looking at it in terms of individual access and exploitation. So, he, to end, we can say that Bethe believed that protective discrimination can and should seek to sta satisfy present need. It cannot do anything to repair past injury. So, with this quote from his work, it is we are able to understand his ideas and thoughts on inequality, stratification and equality in Indian society. With this, I come to an end of today's lecture. Thank you.